Hello folks, this is Mike Harvey at Cimarron Firearms Company and today I'm going to bring you the history of the making of the Quigley Sharps which was made by Pedersoli and Company for Cimarron Firearms Company and uh, so we'll tell you the story of how everything came about. Uh, it was long, long ago in a world quite different from today that my wife and I, we did an annual trek from Houston where we lived then to uh, Colorado, then on to Wyoming. And uh, it seemed that we always ended up in Jackson, Wyoming, near Jackson Hole, and uh, walking the streets and looking at, uh, at shops and this, that, and the other, and uh, just enjoying the, uh, the scenery, beautiful place. And uh, one year, hmm, maybe 40 years ago, uh, we, uh, no, it wasn't that long, it's only 35, but, uh, we were walking down the streets of Jackson. We noticed a new little gun shop and looked in the window and and uh, they didn't seem to have very many modern guns. Mostly it was uh, old guns in there, so I couldn't wait to get in there. So we went in and walking around looking at the Colts and the Winchesters and in the back, on the back wall, there was a, a little rack with six or seven rifles in it. And we noticed a a couple of sharps in there, a carbine and a sporting rifle. So I go back and look and there's a nice Spencer there. And uh, that was interesting, but really caught my eye was the sharps. It was a 1859 conversion of a percussion sharps to a sporting rifle that, that sharps did, oh, in the 1860s and 70s, I suppose. And uh, this one particular one was very nice. It had a heavy octagon barrel, one and an eighth, no, one and a quarter inch, tapered 30 inches to one and just a little over an inch, one and like a tenth of an inch, wasn't, a, wasn't an eighth of an inch. So anyway, uh, I pulled it down, looked at it, looked at the bore. The bore looked like it's brand new. So it was a 4070. Uh, and uh, the caliber I wasn't familiar with. But uh, I looked at the sharps and I asked the guy what he knew about it and he said, not much. And he said he hadn't known it very long. Yesterday a lady came in, an older lady came in and she had two. One was a 4570 exactly like the one that the 4070 that I had and they were identical and he put them up on the rack and a customer that was in the store grabbed the 4570 and bought it then. And then the next day I walk in first thing in the morning and buy the other one. So anyway, he had them priced very reasonably. He said that he sold the 4570 for 3000 and I paid 2500 for this, uh, the 4070. Let me pick it up where you can see it. Here it is. This was a military sharps converted to a buffalo gun. And uh, you know, from the area it came from, it has seen some buffalo fall, I'm sure. But it's a really a nice gun in great shape. This collar here, the way it's made, if you can see it, that's called the Hartford collar. And uh, this would have gone back to to Sharps, they would have remade it from a military carbine or a military rifle into this sporting rifle. And it's a great gun. Got a great bore on it and uh, beautiful sight, works great. And uh, all I need is a buffalo and I can put it to work. But there it is. And this one, I just put it in the safe and uh, left it there for many years. and. Uh, so I didn't have use for it right then, but maybe something would come up later. Anyway, the gun's resting in the safe, and uh, a few years later, the old sharp is still there, so I uh, 
hear the news that there is a great new western out called Quiggly, Quiggly Down Under starring Tom Selleck. Wow, that, that was going to be a great one. So I didn't waste any time getting to the movie theater to watch Quiggly Down Under. And what a great movie it was. And uh, the sharps he was using was very similar to my original. And I noticed that right away. So uh, it looked very much like an, uh, an, a, a converted uh, military gun. Uh, it had the military stock and uh, it had the, uh, the sharps fore end uh, and, the, uh, and the, the, the new sharps octagon barrel on it. Although the barrel was not, uh, did not have the Hartford collar as did a lot of the military conversions. So anyway, uh, since it was very close to my original, I started thinking then, boy, uh, a, a replica of that gun would be a big deal. Well, it it was made the 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 originals for the movie, not the original, but the the movie guns were made by Shiloh in Montana, and uh, they made three of them for the movie, and they were all similar. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, after the movie was over, you know, and I'm waiting for Shiloh to introduce the Quigley model, and they don't. And we go to the SHOT Show, we see Shiloh there, and I go by their booth, and I pick up their catalog every year. And I look at their catalog, and there's no Quigley. The following year, no Quigley. For seven years, I checked their catalog, and they never came out with a Quigley model that was in their catalog that I saw. So, I decided, you know, it's time for the Quigley to hit the market. So I drug my uh, my original out of the safe, and I got a hold of my friend in Italy, uh, Pierangelo Petersoli, who I've known for 40 years, or maybe 50, but a long time. And uh, and Pierangelo was eager to uh, to make this rifle. I told him it's gonna be the best rifle, best selling rifle you've ever made, so, and it is. Uh, so anyway, uh, I didn't send my original to Italy. I kept it, I sent pictures of it to Petersoli and uh, then did the measurements myself and set the measurements of, of the barrel and, and, and everything on it. And, you know, the, uh, the lock, made sure we had the right lock on it, the old style lock converted to, car, uh, to cartridge firing from percussion. And uh, yeah, I made sure all of the details were right. And at that time, we took the markings from the original metal stampings from the my original, and we started putting them on the Petersoli Sharks, the Quigley model. So uh, now I think that Petersoli puts those marks on all of his Sharks rifles. Okay, then, uh, dealing with Petersoli, you know, we had it down, agreed on what we were gonna do, and in 1997, sometime, uh, Pierangelo sent me the first article of the uh, Quigley Sharps. And uh, I had him make a special one just for me. And this is the special gun, the, the, the replica Quigley, right here. You can see it. It's got the Cimarron logo on it in gold, in CFA for Cimarron Firearms. This one has a beautiful European walnut high grade stock. And believe it or not, in the, you know, back then, every gun that came in had this wood on it. They were, they were just beautiful guns and they still are today. But this wood has gone up so much in price. You know, this, this wood, didn't cost me but 50 or 60 dollars extra. Today, it's 500 extra. But uh, it's a beautiful gun. It's got the Hartford collar like the original, the right, correct shaped hammer. 
it's got the sling over here for, I mean, the, uh, the saddle ring for clipping your, your uh, sling onto this if you want to hold something this heavy on your shoulder. But this is the, the replica Quigley made for Cimarron by Petersoli and Company in Italy. It's a beautiful gun. So anyway, yeah, after studying the configuration of, of Tom Selleck's guns, the Shilohs, and of my original, uh, there were a few things about, uh, about the, uh, the movie gun that uh, they were not on uh, my original gun. So when I made the replica, I went with the original, uh, the original features instead of the replica features on the shallow. And uh, one of the reasons that, that, that brought me to do this was a saying that Phil Spangenberger taught me a long time ago and about, the, about replicas. And he said, he quoted John Ford. And what John Ford said was, if that's not the way it was, it's the way it should have been. So I made this one the way theirs should have been. We brought the Quigley to market in 1997. I received the first prototype of the Quigley rifle from Petersoli. Seven years after the movie was in theaters and on TV. Um, anyhow, Petersoli, he was eager to make it, as I said before. And uh, we, uh, we got the buttstock done with, a, with, with, with the uh, patch box in it, as was on the Quigley. And that was a feature that was on the originals, but it wasn't on my original, but most of the military original had the patch box. And uh, the Hartford collar, mine had the Hartford collar, so I went with that instead of the, uh, instead of the, uh, the sharp sporting, uh, rifle barreled shape and uh, my rifle was 30 inch long and the original uh, the uh, the original was 30 inches long and <clears throat> the replica we wanted a longer barrel so I put a 34 inch barrel on it but with the same taper my 30 inch barrel tapers one and a quarter inch at the muzzle to one and a tenth of an inch or so at the breech, but the 34 inch is one and a quarter inch at the muzzle and one inch at the breech, but 30 inches down that barrel, it's one and a tenth inch. So the, 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 uh, the taper of the barrels match, but I put the longer barrel on the, uh, on the Quigley rifle because the replica made by Shiloh had a long barrel. So shortly after we, we got the uh, Quigley on the market, I decided that to keep the other Italians from making a copy of it and calling it a Quigley, I trademarked the name Quigley. And uh, we trademarked it, we registered the trademark and uh, all of that was approved in probably 98, 1998. And uh, then, uh, let's see, 1998, about 15 years later, about 15 years later in maybe 2014 or 2015, I got a letter from Shiloh, Atter Shiloh Sharp's attorney and they didn't like it that I'd trademarked the name Quigley. And I, <laughs> And I told their attorney, well, I waited for you. I waited on you for seven years to do something and you didn't do something that needed to be done. So I did it. And uh, in the process, I trademarked the name. Uh, I registered it. It's been, a, it's been uh, renewed twice. Every five years, you renew it. After you renew it two times, that trademark is yours, it is not contestable. So the trademark was mine and they could not get it. <clears throat> but I told their attorney, I said, look, 
they should have done this, you know, 25 years ago in 1990, whenever they, you know, the movie came out, they had made the guns a couple years before that. So say 1988, they made those guns. <clears throat> and they should have damn well trademarked the name, you know, a long time ago, but they didn't. So I did. I, I figured they didn't have any interest in it. Well, anyway, they, they wanted the name and uh, uh, so really I, I thought that the name should have been theirs but they didn't trademark it. So I said, look, <clears throat> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll sell you the name and I will sell it to you for what I paid to have it registered and to renew it twice. And uh, so we have protected the name for 12 or 15 years, something like that. <coughs> and, uh, and I offered to sell it to them for 5,000. Well, of course they jumped all over it. And so now the trademark Quigley belongs to Shiloh. And I think that's probably where it should have been all along. But you know, I gave up on waiting on them. So I trademarked it myself. And uh, uh, truthfully, Legally, they had no right to it because, you know, it belonged to Cimarron. It was the property of Cimarron and it was not contestable. And, uh, but anyway, I'm sure that their attorney didn't tell them this story. The attorney probably told them that, boy, she had a big falling out with us and we arm wrestled and leg wrestled and punched each other a few times. And then I gave up and submitted the name, you know, and she got it for him. So anyway, but that's not the way it was at all. Anyway, enjoyed talking to you. Hope you enjoy it. But anyway, that's how the Quigley came to the market. And, and it's still there. And uh, Peter Sully did a great job on it. And uh, he makes some really fine guns. Enjoyed talking to you. And appreciate your business if you're a customer. And if you're not, I look forward to you being one. Thank you and see you later. Bye.